What is going on everyone and welcome back to another episode of Gary's Mod Game Mode Scripting. Before we get into any programming today, we want to create another folder with the init cl underscore init and shared.lua files for our brand new entity that we will be creating this episode, which will be the money entity. And the reason for creating this is because with that money entity, we will be able to drop money so other players can pick it up. So let's go ahead and get started with that. Within our entities folder, we want to create a new folder and we're just going to call this money. Then in here, we want to create those files, the cl underscore init dot lua and the init dot lua. And finally, the shared dot lua. When you have all of that set up, we can head into our shared dot lua file to begin and we will be adding in the necessary variables and a single network variable that will hold the value of the money that was dropped. So let's get started with this. Let's set up our network variable first. And to do this, we use the function ent colon setup data tables. There we go. And with any function, we need to end it off. And we use self colon network var and the data type which in this case it will be an integer so int the index of it which is zero because this is our first integer network variable that we are making for this entity and then the name of it which we're just going to call value in order to represent the value or the amount of money that was dropped then we can finish up setting the rest of the values up and there's nothing new here we just have the ent dot type which will be set to anim ent dot base equal to the base underscore gmod entity. Then the print name, which we will set to money. That's the name of the entity. The author, go ahead, throw your name in there. Then the contact. We're just gonna leave it blank, or you can throw in a contact information if you like. Then the purpose of this entity, which will be just the physical, physical version of money. And then the instructions on how to use this money entity, which is just really simple, pick up, make money. Then we want whether or not this is spawnable and admin spawnable. So we're gonna set spawnable equal to true for now. And the reason we are setting this to true is because we want to be able to spawn it from the queue menu as of now. But later on when we create our chat command in order to spawn the money, we will set this to false to prevent it from being able to be spawned through the queue menu. So for now, set it to true. Later on, we will set it to false. Then after that, we want ent.admin spawnable. Spawnable is equal to false. And then, last but not least, the model. So it'll be ent.model. And this will just be equal to models slash props slash cs underscore assault slash money dot mdl. And this model will not show up unless you have Counter-Strike Source installed. If you don't have it installed, go ahead, switch it out with any other model. doesn't matter. But you need CS Source for this one to show up. Anyways, that is all that we need for our share.lua file for today. Let's go and head on over to our client site init file or the cl underscore init file and make it so that this model is actually drawn on the screen. So first we need to include shared.lua and then we create a function and colon draw. Again, nothing new here. And all we're gonna do in here is just do self colon draw model. This way, when this entity is spawned, the model will be shown instead of it just being invisible and not being able to see it. So that's what that'll do for us. And that's it for that file. We can head on over to our init.lua file now where we can add the main spawning code and initialization code for our money entity. First, we wanna add some client side Lua file. So add CS Lua file. First one being the cl underscore init.lua. And another one, which will be the shared.lua file. 
And we also just want to include the shared.lua file. Now our first function we want is one that will initialize this entity. So function and colon initialize end it. And we want to set the model. So self colon set model. This will just be self dot model. That'll go ahead, grab the model variable right here. So it will set the model to this. Then the physics, which will just be the same as everything else, the solid V underscore physics or solid underscore V physics, self colon set move type, move type underscore V physics. Then self colon set solid, which will be solid underscore V physics. Then we want to set the use type self colon set use type. And again, just like the other entities, this will be simple underscore use. Then we want to create a physics object variable local phys equals self colon get physics object. Then with that physics object, we want to check to see if is valid fizz, then we want to go ahead and wake up the physics like so. And again, this is all just the same as what we did last time. So nothing new there. Then on to our spawn function, function and colon spawn function takes in three arguments, a player, an eye trace, and a class name of the entity that we want to spawn. And then just end it off. And first thing we want to check is to make sure that the eye trace, so if tr.hit, exclamation point tr.hit, if it does not hit anything, then we just want to return and stop trying to spawn the entity. And now a new thing here is we want to update the eye trace. So to do this, we're just going to use tr.start. We're going to set the start position for this eye trace equal to PLY, the player, colon, I pause. And then we want the end position, tr.end pause, equal to the player, colon, I position, or I pause, plus 95 times the player, colon, get aim vector. And this will spawn directly in front of us, whereas last time with the other entities, it was a little bit weird in spawning, where sometimes it would spawn to the left of where you're looking or the right of where you're looking. Or if you're lucky, it would spawn exactly where you wanted it to. But this way, it will spawn exactly where you're looking 100% of the time. And then also we want a tr.filter equal to the player entity. Now with that updated eye trace, what we want to do with that is create a new variable called local trace and set this equal to util dot trace line tr. Now what this will do for us is that it will go ahead and perform a trace on the eye trace that we updated here. And it will store that in this trace variable and we will use that trace variable in order to set the position directly in front of us. Let's go ahead and actually go about creating this entity and spawning it in and using that trace variable to set the position. So local ent equals ents dot create class name. So it'll go ahead and create the entity with that class name. In this case, it'll be the money entity. And then we want to initialize the value network variable we have right here using ent colon set value and we're going to set it to zero. Then we can set the position. So ent colon set pause, and we're going to use our trace variable right up here, dot hit pause. And that will go ahead, set the position a little bit away from us, but directly in front of us. Then we want to actually spawn the entity ent colon spawn, and then activate it using ent colon activate. And we just want to return the entity. Now with that done, we can head on over to the use function or we can create the use function now. So function ent colon use 
takes in two arguments, the activator and also the caller. And then end it. Now in here, we want the entity to do something every time a player presses the use key while they have their crosshair over the entity. And the first thing we want to do in here is give the player that presses the use key on the entity however much money is currently stored within this value variable here. So we do activator colon set nwint. The name of the networked integer for the player's balance is player money. And we want to set the networked integer to activator colon get nwint player money plus self colon get value. So currently it's just going to give them zero. I guess it'd be best if I change that to 10 so I can actually show proof of concept here. And also when they click on it, we want to use self colon remove to remove that entity in order to prevent a player from constantly clicking on it and constantly getting however much that money entity is worth. So self that remove will get rid of that when it's clicked on. And with all of that done, we can head on into game and test all of this code out. And once we're in game, if we go to the queue menu, to the entities tab, and then to the other section, we can see that we have our money entity right here. When we click on it, it'll spawn directly in front of us. And if we click on it, you can see that our money goes from whatever it currently is to 10 more than whatever that is. It gives us $10. We can keep on spawning it no matter where we're looking, as long as we're looking, or as long as our eye trace is hitting something, it will spawn it directly in front of us. And if we click on all of them, you can see that our money continues to go up by 10. And also every time we click on it, it is being removed thanks to that self colon remove function right there. With everything working, that will conclude this episode. Next time we'll be making the check command that will allow us to drop a certain amount of money by using an argument. So something like slash drop money 10 will go about dropping $10 on the ground and also making it so the amount of money is displayed above the entity. So if this video was helpful to you, please hit that like button. And as always, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time.